All right, good morning. I'm uh, Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply. And um, I, not long ago, I did a video on the Cobra Class 26, um, taking it out of the box, putting it together. And I've had a lot of people have messaged me and everything and then said that that video really, really helped them because the first time I put together a new Cobra machine, it took me over two hours. And now I can do it in about 15 minutes. Um, so um, there's not a video like that out there for the Cobra Class 4, which is one of their most popular machines. Um, so that's what this video is. We are going to take a uh, Cobra Class 4 here um, completely off the pallet and, uh, and assemble it. And um, hopefully I can show you some tips and tricks to make it a little bit easier for you um, so that you're not overwhelmed when this giant pallet just shows up at your house and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do with this thing? So, um, yeah, the first thing you have to do is before you accept it from the driver that delivers it to you, make sure that it looks like it's still intact. It's kind of hard to see through all the packaging and everything. They do a really good job of packaging it, but um, sometimes accidents happen. One of the biggest things you can look at is the box itself that the machine's in is on the back of this pallet. And if the box is still nice and square and there's not any holes in it or anything, then you're probably pretty safe. But um, other thing I've seen is down inside this packaging here is the thread stand standing up right there. I've also seen those crushed inside of them. Um, so that's another big, uh, big hint that maybe something went wrong. So anyway, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the plastic off of it, okay? I'm going to find an area where there's not anything that I could accidentally cut. I'm going to put my pocket knife in there and get it cut. All right, and then we're just going to wrap it like a Christmas present. That's what it is. Nice Sorry, I'm still on my pallet jack. I'm taking a little away. Um, it doesn't matter if you bought the standard or the premium package, class four. Uh, they're both going to, all of this assembly is going to be the exact same for both of them. Uh, this one is a premium package one, so it came with um, the uh, tabletop attachment. I'll just set it aside for now. And then the rest of the uh, extra attachments are inside that big box right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut some strapping off this thing so that I can get to the machine. Get that out of the way so I don't trip on it and make a fool of myself on a video. And then this strap is holding the box onto the pallet. All right, next thing you're gonna do, they have cardboard around the base of the machine here, okay? And inside that, there's four screws holding the base the, uh, the pedestal of the machine to the pallet. Um, I learned a real simple way to get to those screws easily. I take my foot and I kick those corners of that box open and then I have a uh, Phillips head screwdriver here and I'm going to take those four screws out. only two of them in the trash can. Okay, now this piece of, pl of uh, cardboard right here that was on top of the table actually has some pretty general instructions on how to put the thing together. So it's a very important piece of paper, um, which if you're watching this video, it's kind of obsolete, but anyway. All right, so I got the four uh, screws off to get the, 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 um, the pedestal off of the pallet. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that pedestal and I'm going to lay it back on its side real quick. I want the base of it still on the pallet. Um, two pieces of styrofoam. This one's empty, but this one has your wheels in it. So you need to keep that. And then also uh, this thread stand here is held on with a zip tie. Take a piece of uh, pair of uh, scissors or a knife, cut that zip tie there, and go ahead and set that aside for All right, so back to, we're gonna lean this thing back until the tabletop is up against the ground so it's got nice sturdy so it's not gonna fall. Now I'm gonna cut this thing open and it's got my wheels inside. Four casters. 
They don't skimp on their casters. They're really nice. These things, uh, the locking mechanisms and everything work really nice on them. What you'll notice is there's a little nut on top of the caster here also. That stays on the wheel side of this, um, just where it is, because you can use those to level your machine. If you get into your, into your spot that you want it and maybe the floor is not quite level, you can use these to, uh, to level your machine. That way it doesn't rock back and forth. So what I do is I just turn the uh, caster portion here until I get it started and then I'll lock the wheel and I'll use the wheel as its own wrench and spin it until it's in tight. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And uh, pretty much all Cobra machines have these exact same wheels and, uh, and stuff. So, I mean, you do it the same way for any Cobra machine that you, uh, that you buy. Um, now I'm going to take it and I'm going to uh, tilt it the other way so I can get the other two wheels on. It's going to be a little bit more difficult because I've got to get it off the top. Uh, it is possible to put one of these machines together entirely by yourself. Um, I'm going to do it today, but it is very advised to uh, have a buddy, um, have a friend, have your husband, have your wife, have your significant other, someone to help you because some of these things can get heavy. The machine head itself is very heavy. Um, I will show you how I lift them by myself, but I still don't advise it. So I'm going to lay it down on the other side here, gently. I'm going to put the other two wheels on right quick. too much there. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock these bottom two wheels here because when I go to pick this thing back up, I don't want it to roll out from under me. Alright, so uh, now I'm going to get some more of this trash and stuff out of the way. These nice big pieces of cardboard are always nice to save, and uh, I use them on my dining table and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to take this box off this pallet, and I'm going to get my pallet jack and my pallet out of the way so that I can, uh, can work right in front of the camera. So, give me just a second here. Out of the way, and then we'll get to the box. Okay. Um, I used to tear up a lot of these boxes trying to figure out how to open the daggum thing and get that big heavy machine out of there. Um, finally, excuse me. Finally, I figured it out. I'm going to cut the box open gently, even though it's styrofoam in there, you don't want to cut anything that's too deep. Alright, so I cut it open, I fold all four flaps back, and then I gently lay it on its side. Alright, now making sure all four of my flaps are back, I'm actually now going to turn it onto its top. And I just pulled the box off of it. Now you can save your box and you don't have to worry about, uh, or you didn't have to rip it up. So, whether you save it for a later date for your machine or you save it because kids love giant boxes, whatever. Alright, lay it back on its side again. All the accessories for this machine are right here in the top of this piece of styrofoam. So, I'm going to use my, uh, my bucket knife and I'm just going to get all these little accessories and stuff out of here. Uh, there's some tools, all kinds of stuff here. So, find a clean template on my table, which is difficult. So, I can 
send it all down over here. Here is your lights. We'll put that on the stand. It will be one of the last things we do. In here is my hand wheel on my machine. Once we set the machine on the pedestal, I'll show you how to put the hand wheel on there. Actually, has a specific way it needs to go. All right. Got all the accessories out of there now, and then here's the instruction manual. Comes with a DVD, so don't break it. Now I'm just going to cut the uh, tape that holds this big piece of uh, styrofoam together here. And there she is in all her glory. Cobra Class personal machine. No substitutes. Um, okay, this is the part, like I said, I, I highly recommend you have a friend help. Let me get the stand over here where it can be in the camera way so that folks can see. Um, I highly recommend you have some help lifting this machine. It is very heavy. I don't know exactly what it weighs. Uh, I have learned how to lift them by myself, but it's not easy. Um, I use the assistance of the belt to uh, help hold it onto the table while I get the, the bolts and everything out and in it. Um, here in your accessory bag, the other bag, are the bolts. Um, we're going to get them ready to put the head on the table. So four large black bolts. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, the nuts and washers off, or the nuts and one of the washers off of each of the bolts, because I, uh, I want to have them readily available to screw the head down. to lift the head and I'm going to put it on the uh, on the stand there um, but I'm going to turn everything around so that you can see it because right now I think I'd be standing in your way um, so yeah let me turn on this one and there goes one of those one of those saw that come in that still happened so that I can use the belt to hold the machine on. So, pull this out and start. Which is a feat in itself. Alright. Let me get back over here on camera. Um, sorry, I seem to be a little mixed up this morning. Okay. So, I hate to put the hand wheel on first because it adds weight, but I hate to put it on last because then I can't put the belt on the machine as I put the machine up there. You get this plastic off. The plastic is very oily, and I have learned if I uh, try to lift it with the plastic on it, it's very slick. Okay. 
So you have your big hand wheel here. It's got two screws right there and there, okay? And um, it's got holes in the pulley that you can get to those screws. What you need to do is you need to screw one of those screws in and figure out which one of them. One of them's flat on the bottom and the other one has just a little bit of a dome shape to it. Uh, this one's the one with the dome shape. I know I wouldn't be able to get it on camera, but anyway, you'll, you'll see it when you're looking at one. Now, if you look at the drive shaft on the machine, where the, uh, um, where the hand wheel goes, there is a slot. Um, I'm not sure what position it'll be on, on every machine right now. This one's down here on the bottom. That slot is where the domed screw is going to fit. Okay? So I'm gonna make sure I get the right one again. I'm gonna put it on. Like that, lining that screw up. Don't screw up too far apparently. She slides on like a champ, okay? So, what I need to do is tighten those two screws. Um, the Lowe's Machine Company provides a very long screwdriver that fits in there. So I'm going to uh, do the dome one first, and you might even feel it kind of rotate to get into position into that little slot. All right, and then I'll do the other one. Telling you I was going to do. Um, I'm going to get this set ready to lift and put onto the tabletop. Okay, so I'm going to slide it back here. Get my tabletop in position here. All right, I'm going to do a couple of things all at the same time. I'm going to set the machine up. Um, there's a lot of holes on this tabletop. Okay. Um, the ones that it's going to mount to are the second ones in from the from the front of the table, and then um, the second ones in from the from the back there too. So there's four mounting holes. You've got four bolts here. I've got a belt. As I lift the machine up, I'm going to set it on the table, and I'm going to support the long end of it because it's not going to hold itself up. It is off balance. As I put the belt on it. Okay, and I'll have to lift it up a little bit to create enough room to put the belt on it. Once I've got the belt on, then I can jimmy it into uh, position and start putting the bolts in. Again, way easier with a friend. Please call a friend, have someone help you, but I don't have a friend. So, how I lift the machine, you cannot see You'll see it when I stand up, but I take and put my forearm through the machine, um, the, the arm of the machine, and then I take my other hand and kind of balance the end of it here, and lift with my knees. And there we go. Now, I'm going to put the belt on, and the belt's going to hold it temporarily in position so that I can get the bolts on. So to do that, I have to put the belt on the top hand wheel up here, get a good grip of the end of the machine here, and I will lift the end of the machine to create enough room to put the belt on the bottom pulley down here. And then when I set it back down, it's gonna pull that belt nice and tight. Now I just gotta shimmy it around until I get it right where these holes line up, and I can start dropping bolts in. And then one nut and one washer on the end of each. Um, this belt will hold this machine up, as you can see. But I don't let it. I still keep my hand supporting the machine just in case something's wrong with the belt or something. Um, you don't want to drop a $2,300 machine 
just because you made a little mistake there. All right, so I'm going to get a, a nut on one of these bolts just a little bit, and that's going to be my insurance policy that this thing's not going to fall. So there we go. I, uh, I reached under the table, put a nut and a washer on the back bolt, and now I feel pretty safe at letting the machine go. I'm going to walk around and put the other two bolts in, because I know that I haven't lined it up right. <laughs> so that I can wiggle it around so those other two bolts fall down. There's one. And the other. Okay. Get that box out of the way. Alright, so I'm going to put these uh, four uh, nuts on the bottoms of these bolts. And uh, use a, the, the, there's a large Allen head wrench in your toolkit that comes with the machine and one of those little baggies over there um, so that you can have uh, the right size Allen to um, put these in. Now, here's something I forgot to mention. One of these washers has a little cutout on it, okay? That washer goes right here in this hole because it fits. Um, right up against the machine, so there we go. All right, fourth and final nut and washer. Kind of hard to reach because you got to reach around the motor to do it. Come in from the other side here. Yeah, there it is. All right. So I'm going to grab my big Allen wrench out of the toolkit. That's the largest one in the kit. Is the one you need. Tighten those bolt heads down. Uh, I'll just grab the nut with an adjustable wrench. Um, I forget which size the actual nut is. I do have the wrench out there, but some people may not have them all, so I'll just use an adjustable for the video. last two and we'll be done with this part and we'll start putting accessories and stuff on. She's secure. So um, we got we can pretty much do anything else we wanted uh, next. But what I will do is I will mount the chain from the back of the machine to the presser foot pedal. Let me go ahead and dump this bag of accessories into the drawer here so that. I Oh, 
on me. Alright, the chain. The one on the bridge. Alright, so the chain. This chain goes from this little silver hook right here down to the presser foot uh, lift pedal. Um, so what you do is you want to go behind or on the machine side of this bar here and go ahead and hook it up to that little hook. All right. And then what folks don't notice, but it's there, is there's a hole right here on your machine. And it goes right through the base of the machine in that hole. And then it'll go through the table and it'll come out down there by the foot pedal. Okay. Um, how I do it, I take one of my S hooks. There's an S hook already on this pedal down here. I run the chain through the S hook. I don't necessarily hook it to any particular loop. And then I pull it back up to itself. I take this S hook and I just pull it to the, I don't have to pull it crazy tight. I just pull it to the one it kind of fits to and I, I drop it. And now we can control our presser foot with the pedal. All right, next thing we're gonna install is the lights. First time I got a machine from the Lemon Machine Company, I looked at this light and I went, well, it didn't have a plug on it. And uh, even worse, I didn't notice that the plug was in my accessory packet. I went to the hardware store and bought a plug. And uh, so, yeah. Um, so there's a big nut at the bottom of this light and then a lot of cord. Okay. I'm going to unwind all that cord and I'm going to take that nut and one of the washers off. And you'll see there's two large, there's two big holes back here. There's a larger one and a smaller one. Uh, the smaller one uh, that's closer to the machine here is where the, the light is going to fit. So I take the nut and one of the two washers completely off the light, set them aside, and I need to feed the entire cord for the light through that hole. That's why the, the plug is not on the light is because it needs to fit through that little hole to get mounted. All right, and then I'm just going to take it, and that's normally the position that most people use this light in, and I will run the uh, nut and washer back up the cord of the light all the way to the base, and I'll tighten them up. Really handy little light. I, I do like the ones that come on the cover. They're very bright. And they uh, really help when you're sewing. Just the here. Give this a quick turn. That doesn't have to be crazy tight by any means. Install the thread stand. Whoops, sorry. Next thing we're going to do is actually put some power on that lid. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead of myself here, getting all excited. All right, so in that accessory kit that I dumped in here, there's a little package with two little white plastic pieces, and one of them looks like a plug. So I'm going to show you how this mounts onto this cord, and then I'll show you how I actually do it. All right, so this cord. If you look at the back of the plug here, it's got a, a where you can tell that the cord can go into it, and then there's like a hole there that it can go down and fit inside of, and then it lays across those two sharp prongs that are right there. Then you take that 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 uh, end or the uh, cover, and you push it onto it, and that's going to force the cord down onto the the electronic prongs there. But I need to do some work with the cord before I actually mount the dang thing. Um, so there's some wires uh, running under this machine 
that go from your power switch to your motor. And what I do with this light, light cord is I just kind of wrap it around those wires a few times, going from the back to the front, because there's actually a plug on the very back of your power switch. And that's where you plug your light into. That way, when you turn your machine on, your light has power. I, uh, that's another thing I didn't learn about my first Cobra for a long time, is that that plug was back there, and that caused me to actually have to use two plugs in the wall for my machine for about six years. So, if I had just paid attention, then I wouldn't have that problem. I don't see a pair of scissors, so I'll cut this uh, cord with my pocket knife here. Hopefully it's sharp enough. There we go. All right, and then just like I showed you a while ago with the cord, I'm going to put it back on and uh, install the cover, and that will power my light. And then I just plug it right into the back of that power switch. Your big thing is you want to make sure when you're wrapping it around the wiring down here and stuff, you just don't want to get it against the hand wheel or the belt because that will create wear. That will wear a hole in the electrical line, then you'll get a short, and then you're going to have a fire. Nobody likes a fire, especially not in their leather room. Um, Okay, so next is the thread stand. It's got a, a nut, um, a washer, a rubber washer, and then another washer. <laughs> so, I, uh, I do a washer and then the rubber washer, and then I put it through that large hole right there. And then the nut and the bottom washer. Actually, my adjustable wrench that I brought in here is not large enough to tighten this nut down, so I'm not going to do it on the video. I'll have to go back there and get a larger wrench to tighten that nut down real tight. But you can do it pretty well, just hand tight, just holding the nut and twisting the thread stand a little bit. And it's it, it's pretty solid. It doesn't really, I mean, there's not a lot of weight or anything ever on it, but like it doesn't need serious tightening anyway. Um, so yeah, that's it. Other than that, when you uh, start to mess with your machine, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of thread wrapped up right here. This is after the leather machine company went and did their sew off and, and did all their adjustments on this machine and made sure that it was just ready to ship to you. Um, they just took a bunch of thread and wrapped it up back there. You can cut it off if you want to, but I actually usually just un, 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 unwind it all and I just use it as practice thread. I'll run it through the hole on the, uh, the thread stand up there, but uh, Anyway, all right, so again, um, hopefully this video helped. Uh, like I said, I did one on the 26, and a lot of folks talked about how much it did help them, so there's not one out there for the Cobra Class 3, Class 4, or King Cobra, which are all the exact machine except different arm lengths. Um, so yeah, hopefully this, uh, this video helped out some. Um, if you ever have any questions about a, a Cobra sewing machine, you can always call the leather machine company or one of their dealers. Um, yeah, other than that, um, this machine is going to last somebody a lifetime, so good for them. All right, uh, thanks for watching. Hope I helped. If you have any questions, feel free to call and leave a comment or whatever. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply. Have a good day.